Today we're going to be doing something that I've been threatening for a while. I'm going to be looking at the Middle Earth strategy battle game, particularly one scenario that's a great way to actually start to get into the game and a good way of introducing new players as well as just getting the general vibe of how the game works and you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. What we're looking at today is the Balan's Tomb and the Mines, the Mines of Moria. So the Mines of Moria. So first of all, let's look at what you need for setup. And obviously models are a good thing. So one box of the standard Moria Goblins is all that's required. The scenario we're playing today is from the, an earlier version of the Mines of Moria and the Cave Troll. And they have a Cave Troll. Of course, we would only go so far with our villains. We need to look at the heroes. Part of what makes this such an iconic set to start with is that everybody knows what it looks like and what it's supposed to look like. So what I've done is on the, some of the names I've put in the back because Lord knows one hobbit looks like every other hobbit and you gotta make sure you know what you're doing. So, people who know, they know, but sometimes it's just easy to write Frodo on the back. Of course we've got the rest of the fellowship. Gandalf, Aragorn, Legolas, Boromir, Gimli, and the Hobbits. Now, you can get the kit, which is basically the plastic for the doors, columns, the trap doors, and the well. And this is the setup. This is one of the easiest setups you could possibly imagine. You don't need to go ultra difficult or specialized. The only thing you need to remember is that one inch here and here, you have stairs that lead up. Apart from that, tape, I use packing foam. You can use anything you want. That's not a problem. This is the complete everything. So as I said, this is an earlier version of the Mines of Moria. It went through numerous iterations just because the variations of the game had changed. And we shall do the initial setup. For the bad guys, we have 12 goblins within four inches of the door. And that's any of the 12 goblins, how you want to set them up, but your four inches is where it's all got to fit. This deployment zone here, is the bubble that all deployment has to happen in. So it's easy to get jammed up at this point, especially once that troll arrives on turn four. Over at the trap doors, we have two goblins again, any two goblins set up on the trap door, on each trap door. So that's a total of the 12. Plus two others, that's 16 of the 24 goblins in the pack, or that are available. And the rest, and any wounds that come up, any wounded goblins come off, they can just re-enter as in the next round. You can re-enter from two goblins from a trapdoor, or one from the well. So that's something that um, the players need to think about. And as I said, you can get as complicated as you want. If you find that you need to, you can always, as one some of the later versions do, throw in a captain and also maybe even a shaman. On Balance Tomb itself directly is Gimli. And everyone else can start within six inches of this. The tomb starts at the center of the board, in the middle, and Pretty much that's where it goes from there. Then within a six inch bubble around that, the rest of the players can be deployed. Now these are entirely downloadable and you can get these everywhere, but I just made these up. These are the cards for 
the main, well, all the forces here. Hobbits, Gandalf, Aragorn, Boromir, Legolas, and Gimli. Then I've got just a basic chart in case I need to remember what the strength versus the defense damage dice rolling is. Goblins and Troll. You don't need that. You can just write out what you have or you can, like I said, there are downloadable versions of this that have all the rules laid out and everything else. So it's easy to do and work from there. But that's just handy to have it as a card to keep track of certain things. Every character, or every major hero character, has might, will, and fate that can be spent. General grunts and usual um, villain types and henchmen and whatever else generally don't. If you've got a name or you're a special character, you will have a might, will, and fate, even if it's one point, and that stands you uh, slightly uh, aside from uh, the regular forces. Now this is a special scenario, so basically it's completely different to a standard game. Um, and the goblins just don't ever stop. The basic, the initial rule for all of this is it's the goblin tide. And they can just keep coming on, which is why they do, when you knock one off, they can come off back on the next, next movement phase. So victory conditions are pretty simple. Ten rounds. 10 combat rounds, and the heroes have to survive all 10 rounds. The bad guys have to kill five, any five of the heroes, and there are nine of them. But also, if they at any point kill Frodo, that's an instant win. So that's basically it. So the Frodo is an instant win. The taking out the um, five of the fellowship is also a win. And the fellowship just gotta keep on going. Basically, the general strategies are to aim at the hobbits, take out as many of those as possible, and Boromir, because poor Boromir doesn't run in the super strong way that he does. He's in a weakened state, his will is sapped, so he's more easily defeated here than he would be anywhere else. In all of these scenarios, it's the um, heroes that the good side goes first, and if there is no good side, that's when you roll off to see who's considered the good side. Basically, it's a movement which includes a lot of actions, fighting, and then, we're res then it's the resolution. It's simple, there's a degree of complexity to it, and this is a game of model to model as opposed to swarms of units just inflicting blobs of damage and there are ways of dealing with it but this is how they sort of recommend and we'll move forward with how we used to run this game as an intro game back in the day because like i said this is one of the best intro games to how to play this game there possibly is all right so the heroes go first and what we've got is legolas has a special rule that allows him to fire three times which he does most bow fire is only once, which Aragorn has a bow, and he can only fire once. So we'll get bow fire out of the way, then we'll do some movement with some of the other characters. And we might even cast a spell for um, Gandalf as well while we're at it. So Legolas is going to be firing on this side. From there, to here on these two guys. Now, what we can do is we do one shot at a time and we sign, so we attack this guy, roll, attack this guy, roll, attack this guy, roll, or attack this guy, roll, wins, takes it off, attacks that guy, roll, attacks that guy, roll, wins, takes it off. That's the long way around, but that is the way that it is meant to be done. Um, sometimes people just say, I roll all three, I'm going for those two, they're both exactly the same profile, it doesn't really matter. If I inflict two wounds, they both come off, if I inflict one wound, then the defender gets to pick which one comes off. That is also okay. So we're about to roll for Legolas, 
and he's going to roll the one or one goblin at a time and he needs to roll a three plus first one misses second one hits the elf bow has an extra pip of strength so in this instance the strength three versus the defense four he needs to roll a five or higher in order to actually inflict the damage which he does and this is where if you wanted to you could throw in a point of might if you needed to make sure you hit that roll you can add might to change the dice roll but in this instance we didn't have to so that first or uh, first goblin is down then with his third shot he rolls on the other one scores a hit needing a five gets a four and this is the when at the moment he just leaves it he's not going to spend that point of might so aragorn's firing at one of the shield guys it's on the front row row of the goblins and he hits he needs a three plus which he gets his bow is strength two and the goblin with the shield is five so he needs sixes for this what aragorn can do he gets one free point of might that doesn't uh, drain his res or, um, his uh, store of might so he starts with three points of might but he gets a free one every round so he could use that which he does to knock out one of the shield goblins. Gandalf casts a spell and he's going to use his free point of will to cast a spell to do a blinding light which forces all of the archers to roll sixes to strike at him which he does, so now he's got a big ball of light and the area is lit up like daylight but apart from that there's no uh, um, anyone attacking requires a 6 to hit the hobbits scatter to get cover so that way you've got an additional 4 plus in the way checks made for any archers firing at them Boromir moving forward Gimli moving off the tomb moving forward and now it's time for the remaining goblins so from Gandalf six inches Covers pretty much everybody. Any archer attacks to those to the party, basically requiring sixes to hit. The goblins are already needing five pluses, but that six, just as good. And then for the in the ways, you've got to also roll for the obstacles that are in the way, or another character that's in the way, based on the line of where the archer is to the model. If there's someone in the way or something in the way then that's a roll for every single thing that's in the way. Which is pretty good. Does mean a lot of dice rolls sometimes, and if they're on a horseback, the horse can be the target or the rider, and again, everyone's just in the way. There's not, apart from the Legolas's special single shot ability, there's not a lot that um, ignores the in the way rules. So you've always got some sort of cover, unless there's a very special heroic act or a character that has something special attached. So now we've got the archers firing off and then the goblins will move forward. So two archers onto a Boromir that are need sixes to hit because of Gandalf's special rule, or Gandalf's uh, spell, and also sixes to wound because Boromir is just rock hard. And neither. And two onto Gimli. Nope, 
not there either. And then we've got two, they're attacking Gandalf directly, two archers. One that hits, and Gandalf has a defense five, which means that it's still a six. And they don't make it. And finally, the one on the far side against Legolas, six to hit, nope. And then the goblins move. You can actually move and shoot and all of that in, in any particular order. It's not, there's an actual, this is the order in which things happen. It's just, this is the way that I'm doing it just to keep that simplicity in play. And things that we just try and do. All right, so we've got an attack with Boromir. Like I said, we're keeping this light and fluffy, but there's still a lot of actions that can be done that can interrupt, can go first, and all sorts of forcing of activities. But this is just where we're starting from here. All right, and we're off. So Boromir has three attacks, and normally a goblin has one, but this goblin is being backed up by a spear which gives them an additional one. So the way that combat works, it's model versus model, as I said before. So we've got the red dice being goblins, blue being our boy Boromir. So what we look at is the highest fight value, or the, the highest dice rolls, and see who wins. So Boromir rolled a five, the goblins roll the six, and the goblins win this particular fight. Had it been tied as a result, then we go to the actual physical fight value, and whoever has the highest fight value, and in this instance, goblins have a two fight value versus the Boromir's six, Boromir would crunch it. But they roll a six, he rolled a five, so they win. The first thing that happens is Boromir gets pushed back one inch. And there's an opportunity for a strike by the goblins. So the goblins with their strength three need a six plus or a six to wound, to inflict the wound on Boromir. And they don't. Which is good because Boromir, while he's got a couple, he's got three wounds on his system, he doesn't have any fate to defend against being assaulted. When you take a wound, you can spend a fate point to try and ignore the wound. And at this stage, Boromir has no fate because in the Fellowship of the Ring, he dies. Spoiler alert. So he has no fate. Generally, that's a good mask. That's a good way of knowing whether a character is um, going to make it through the series. So at the end of round one, we've got Goblin down, Goblin down, a swarm of movement, and hiding hobbits. At the end of the round, the blinding light goes off, and we're off. So now, we go to round two, which means the heroes go first and do what they do here with what's left. Then on the movement of the evil side, reinforcements arrive. So it's in their movement phase. So we'll see what the heroes do next. So the initial movement is for Boromir to recharge the people that attacked him. Gimli's moving into here. Now I've stopped Gimli an inch beforehand because he has a throwing weapon that he's allowed to use before 
he goes any further and um, Aragorn's attacking this one here. Legolas will fire his two plus bow shot against this guy because there's all this in the way but with his special ability he's able to ignore the in, in the ways as long as he fires one shot and he gets to roll a two plus to hit. So we'll resolve Gimli's throwing weapon first. So he rolls one attack, he gets a four plus, and then he has to hit with a five plus, and he can just keep moving forward to attack the other guy. He hits, and he hits a five plus, and he rolls six, he gets to kill the guy at the front, and he gets to continue charging to the, the uh, attacker behind. So that's Gimli having attacked. Remove the, the front, and now he's onto the spear. So it's just a single attack. And we can do the rest as we go. Legolas actually rolled a one, but Aragorn, three attacks against the two versus the first goblin backed up by a spear. All right, so that's... Not good for the heroes, and there's a lot of difference between ones and twos and threes versus the sixes required. So, Aragorn loses that fight. He will push, be pushed back an inch. And then the, um, the goblins will have a crack at six pluses, or sixes, which don't happen. So it's worth noting as well that if you're at any point trapped in a corner or trapped and surrounded and you can't move, then the number of attacks against you double. If you get knocked down, because some effects, if you successfully get hit, you get knocked over, then the number of attacks get doubled onto you. And when you inflict a successful hit, everyone moves back that's in line and they make way for the guy falling back. So... Next up is the Boromir fight. Boromir, as we know, is three versus two. And this time, Boromir wins with some degree of success. So they both move back an inch. And now Boromir gets to strike. Boromir strength 4 versus defense 5, he has to roll a 5 plus, he's got 3 attack dice. He doesn't get it, but what he does do is decide to spend a my point, because he's got a reserve of 6, and he'll knock out that one guy. Gimli against his dude. So Gimli is using his special dwarf rule that allows him to have 3 attacks and versus the one goblin because he killed the other goblin. And he wins, Gimli wins. The spear goblin doesn't have a shield, so four plus is required. And that's a resounding success. That's one more down. So Gandalf is going to do his casting of his spell again. And this may look good for the, for the heroes. They've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 goblins left on the board. But the goblins are yet to have their turn. So Gimli's just out of range and not covered. It happens that way sometimes. Now it's time to get some action happening for the goblins. More goblins! More goblins! 
So all the goblins get to come back. Two via the trapdoor. One from the well. And whatever can fit inside the four inch deployment zone of the door. So this is round two, they've come on board and now they can charge on the first turn that they arrive. They get to do what they do as well. All good. When you're moving up and down without stairs, you move to the edge and then you would roll the die. On a two through five, you would be here. And that's the end of your movement. On a one, you fail to go anywhere. Potentially fumble in some instances. And on a six, you just get to move like it's your normal movement. Goblins, being cave dwellers, get a plus one onto that. So basically, on a five or a six, they get their full movement on a one through four, they just get to stop here or stop at the bottom here. These are elevated, as are the ones over by the trap door. So they get to fire without having to worry about the in the ways of some columns, which we're assuming going all the way up, are in the way. Someone adjacent to the terrain, that's in the way. But Gandalf and Legolas are free to be targeted by all the archers. The guy at the back didn't have enough movement space, didn't have enough move to actually attack. He's a bit of a gap. We had one of these guys able to make their roll the other one did not. And likewise, this one made their climbing check to be able to do the full movement there as well. Gimli now has two goblins against him, both backed up by spears. Two spearmen attacking Boromir. And we've got the guys attacking Aragorn. So, let's rock and roll. We'll do the Aragorn fight. Three attack dice versus two goblins. So that is pretty savage, old Aragorn. Not doing too well today. I can't get in there, but basically, yeah, he's got like one, three, and two again versus a three and a five all right so those two attack Aragorn with one wound and Aragorn is going to uh, roll out his fate point so he's got three he'll spend one and on a four plus, he ignores the wound, which he does. But now we're down one on the fate. Boromir's minus one might, and Aragorn's minus one fate. Another reason why it's handy to have these sorts of things, you can get tokens and you can do all sorts of, you know, there, there are lots of things you can do. Keep track of them using dice, um, shield, total, there's a lot of options. Whatever it takes, as long as you just keep some basic bookkeeping. Spending the might, will and fate, is, um, is one of the key parts to, uh, to this game. Boromir. Boromir wins the fight, pushes both of them back. So in this instance, Boromir has to split his three attacks. He's got two separate attackers, so he can do two onto one and one on the other. Kills. And doesn't. So Gimli has his three attacks versus the two goblin soldiers backed up by their shield, by their spears. 
Alright, so in this instance, what we need to do, because I don't I'm just not rolling lots of dice, so five. So two of the guys, two and a three, nope, and the other two, that's a five. So basically their highest fight value matches his fight value, oh sorry, his fight roll. And now we go to their actual fight values. And Gimli, having a six versus the Goblin two, Gimli wins. So he pushes them all back. And in the same way as Boromir, he has to pick which ones he's going for. So he's two on one and one on the other. Oh, and he misses that one, needing a six. No, sorry, I needed a five. Needing a five plus, so that's one down, and that's the other one down. There you go. So they push back an inch, and he takes out that front row. We have Sam versus a goblin. So Sam has a fight three versus the goblin fight two. Should they be tied? And here we go. So Sam wins. Pushing the goblin back. And now he has to roll a five plus, which he does. So he gets to stabby stab stab that goblin. So at the end of round two, this is what we're looking like. Goblins, goblins, goblins. All right, so get on with round three. So once it gets to round four, the evil player is able to bring on the troll and they brought a cave troll. And that's when the action really starts. So by the beginning of round three for our goblins, they've come on board, they've moved forward. So what happened with the heroes is the Legolas pushed this one back. Frodo and um, Pippin did that. Sam won his. Gandalf trapped one of the goblins, smacked it. Bit of to and fro. Boromir had to spend some might. Gimli's just a dwarf killing machine. He's racking up the totals so that it makes it easier for Legolas to fire his bow. But um, this is three, at the beginning of Evil 4, that's when the troll arrives. So you can see how these goblins just keep coming back. So the heroes have done pretty well in holding themselves up. And um, they've been able to reduce the number of losses by having things hidden and by keeping everybody out of the way, which is good. A couple of lucky rolls here and there. And we'll get on to um, some battles. So with some of these multiple combats, like against Boromir here, we've got three actual attacks with one of them rolling two dice because they're backed up by a spear. So it's two, three, four attack dice versus Boromir's three. Aragorn is three V three. And Gimli is four V three down here. So that's starting to push people around. When you lose you get backed out as far like in the straight back. So in this instance if he loses he's heading this way. If he wins, if Boromir wins, he does this. So he can do the Horn of Gondor being outnumbered and that gives him some extra rules. Gimli's just rock hard. All right. We've done the, the, uh, the 
the dice rolling for the missile fire, a couple of near hits, as in they hit but didn't do any damage, but for the most part, their five pluses are, um, oh yeah, they're five pluses. So only a couple out of all of these are about right. So we have a fight on Frodo, who's managed to have um, two bad guys against him. And that is not good. He's got one attack dice. There's two of them. He does have a high fight value and he does have a defense of six, which is in his favor. However, they win the fight. So they win the fight, they push him back one inch, and then we roll for damage. Frodo's got two wounds, and he's got three fate. Nope. All good. At the beginning of a fight where Boromir is outnumbered by two or more, in this case he's outnumbered with three, three bad guys, he can blow the horn of Gondor, which means that the, they take a courage test, well, the highest one takes a courage test. In this instance, they've all got courage too. Courage test is 2d6 plus the value, and you need to score a 10 or higher. Now with the horn of Gondor rule, if they fail to do so, Boromir automatically wins the fight. So therefore pushing everybody back, and he's getting to do his strikes. So the goblins have a courage of two, meaning they need an eight or higher in order for combat to proceed as normal. And they don't. So Boromir automatically wins that fight, pushes them all back an inch, and then inflicts his three attacks of damage how he wants. He gets to sp spread that about if he wants to. So by the end of turn three, Frodo was attacked, but just pushed back. Mithriel working. Mithriel. Sam defended against that. We had lots of Bruha down here. Boromir took one out. Gimli took out two. Gimli's a beast. And this is the top end uh, or the bottom of three. So the next is round four. Heroes go first. And they know that when it comes to the deployment of the goblins, they have a cave troll, is coming on. Okay, cool. So this here is a good strategy as well, where you've got the backups. So the spear can back up the front rank, adding an extra attack. So you have somebody coming in from the flank and peels off because then they separate into two separate fights, peels off the, um, the, other at the other attacker. So you're splitting it back up. So instead of this becoming a two on two fight, it now becomes a two dice v one dice fight. And that's a one to one there. So with this game, how you move your guys around is really important and you need to have space in order to get a model through. You can't just lob your way through. There are certain times when you can shuffle the characters around and generally when they're being forced back into a retreat. So if Aragorn forces this back, they both go back and if there were a squabble, they would all sort of move around to make space so that Aragorn has his one inch zone. You can't just sort of end one inch within one inch of a character and, and not be engaged in an attack with them. So one inch you get pushed back or, or moved aside. If you can peel them off, that's a great way of getting the ranks because there are some rules for pikes where, or there are rules for pikes. So if you've got three, then you're adding the second and third layers. So with spears, it's just the two. Pikes, you get to do the three. And that's the other bit where you want to be able to really make sure that your timing how you hit and strike at the right moments. So this is the top of round three. We've got a fair bit of combat happening. Now this is a trapped scenario because you can't push them back. So if Legolas wins this fight, 
he gets to do treat that as trapped and so on there's a bit of a gap that's been made here because then everyone knows what's coming up next and you need some space to be able to really hammer it and also as in this rules if the troll has to move through a goblin those goblins take a strength three hit so that's good if you can get them to swarm in a little bit and get in the way all right so that's a goblin versus sam or well, Sam's engaged the goblin, I should say. All right, get some dice rolling happening. So now we have round four for the villains, the evil ones, which means that we've got eight goblins to bring on board and a cave troll. Sorry for the light, here's what it is. So the hobbits performing admirably with their strikes all over the place. Oops, I forgot one combat there. Just do that quickly. Sam, one attack versus one defense, one attack dice for the goblin. The Goblin versus Sam is a tied result and the fight value of Sam is higher than the Goblin, so he wins. Basically what does happen is if the fight values are equal, it becomes a single dice roll off with one to three being one side, four to six being the other. So Sam gets to do his attack. And fails. Evil turn four, and it has arrived. So now we have the change in the dynamics. This is a creature that can take out heroes. Specifically that one. Poor Baromir running out with, with uh, running around with zero fate, takes a wound, He's going to cop it. He's got a few wounds, but still, it's one of those things. If you're able to uh, take out Boromir, then as many of these hobbits as possible, that makes your life so much easier as the villains, as the evil players. So now it's time for everyone to freak out and just begin to have things happen. So we'll get the troll and we'll get them moving. And now Gandalf's going to start doing some magic, spending some will to try and remove that. With goblins on the board only, status quo can be maintained for the next five, four or five rounds. That's easy. But with that running around on the board, that makes it difficult. Which is why if you add one captain to the goblin force, it can throw an imbalance out a little bit. But if the players are more comfortable and they know what they're doing and they find it a little bit easier, then that's... A good thing to do as well just to sort of add a little bit of oomph add a uh, a captain and failing that even if you wanted to add a, another shaman or add a shaman and so on that too can happen all right so let's move let's get the troll happening here I was rolled out the um, Goblin Archers, not a lot happening, but it's just rolling dice and we'll get the troll backed up by a spear with fighter with a spear, we're good. Alright, so Gimli is in trouble. Okay, so after all the dice rolls, there was a single six. And Gimli's rolled the five. So with them both having fight six, if Gimli wanted to burn his um, a point of might to go for a tie, it would be a roll off between the troll side and between the, um, the evil side and Gimli. 
to burn a mite to get a 50% chance or cop the hits. He's going to burn a mite and he'll have one mite left. So what that does is one to three is the evil, four to six is good. And the evil side win. The two goblins and the goblin rolls a six which is a hit. Gimli has two wounds. He's burning fate. Ignores that. Now it's for the troll. Troll is the more well, easiest for the troll because we need four. And fives are required, of which one. And Gimli's going to burn his last fate. Which he does. So Gimli's down to zero fate. And but he's still kicking at this stage. Be able to use his bow with some degree of higher accuracy, which is what he's gonna need if he's gonna start clearing up some of these things. Are these are the guys that are in trouble. One comes out of there, two can come out of there if there's space. So basically the goblins just need to keep charging the hobbits. Eventually the hobbits will fall. We run out of game time before that happens. Who knows? If Frodo goes down, it's down. It's done. But basically the three standard hobbits, Pippin, Mary, and Sam, and even Boromir once the, the ogre's on his way. But Gimli's running around with one wound less at the moment, and not a lot of fate or might left, if any. So there's this is what happens towards the back ends of games in this in uh, Middle Earth. You end up running out of the important might, will, and fate. And you end up just relying purely on dice rolls, which is fine, but um, even rolling on a normal match point, so points match game, where you're rolling for priority every turn, that can become a strong issue as well. So who has priority? And when you get to turns 17 to 20, Generally, all of your heroes are down to just their bare stats with not a lot of points left. That's what makes this game slightly different to, say, the standard 40k Warhammers and a lot of other uh, tabletop miniature games. You don't really have a time limit. Scenario is different. Off the edge of the board, complete the mission, done, or whatever. In this, stay alive for 10 rounds. They're halfway done. But what will happen in a points match is that you will end up with a lot more options and you can strategize a little bit more, move your characters around, move your pieces around and back them up and so on. Get cavalry on the board, move the cavalry around, get your spellcasters happening, uh, add some courage to your troops with drums and horns, uh, get Banners on the table for re-rolling fight values, no, for fight rolls, and so on. So there's a lot that you can do to expand on the game beyond just treat it like a board game. This is almost like a board game variant because it's a very limited scope. But as you can see, it doesn't take up a lot of space. A normal game could be 4x4 or go up to 6x4 if for really big points, but you've got to watch out that it goes for hours. Because as we can see, we're moving pieces individually, not as a blob of units. So, <clears throat> this is the basic variant of Middle Earth strategy battle game. And it's pretty awesome. It's one of my favourite games. I find the strategy element quite complex. And that's what's always good. And then, of course, you've got the 
the pieces and the and everything else, and the, the and the actual characters. Who doesn't want to get a bunch of Dunedain Rangers in? They'd mop up a lot of this because this is what they're built for, and so on. Put a ring wraith on the board. That'll shake things up. All right. So what I might do is leave it kind of here just because I've shown what I needed to show, a little bit of all the combat, a little bit of spell casting, a little bit of arrows, um, a few rules here and there. Showed you enough to be able to sort of crack out a few models and, and give it a crack. Play it yourself. This comes as separate kits. You can get a um, more of a flat board game variant of this, or you can just you know, do it this way. It's very simple, you don't have to do a lot, and the good thing with uh, Middle Earth is that you can play it with a very few number of models. It's such a skirmish game at its core that you can have sides of, si sides of each uh, of less than you know 20 models, and you don't have to go full armies, you can go pieces, and uh, just have some fun. <clears throat> like I said, normally it's a 4x4. Four but uh, this is a very special board. This one, Boulder's, oh, Boulder's Gate. Who am I kidding? Balanced Tomb. All right, wrong gaming system. Okay, well, I wanna thank everybody. I'm sure you wanna know how it all pans out, but um, I'm pretty confident that the heroes will last their 10 rounds. They'll lose a few guys along the way. Gimli's about to go down. Boromir will be aimed at next by the troll and <clears throat> as long as Gandalf can stick around with the the hobbits at the back they've got a chance to survive. Not that that's a guarantee it's just one of the just the way how I see it from here. Anyway well thank you so very much subscribe like all of that hopefully this is good we don't mind a bit of this content um, it's something that I don't normally do so if it's more of you'd like to see a little bit more of expansion that's great um, if you're just happy to have this as it I might just do it as a standalone but um, it's just a bit of a change from the usual that I do and I just want to thank everybody just keep thanking everybody for supporting and for um, wanting to see more content I'm really happy with the way that people are reacting which is great I'm glad and I look forward to um, everything going forward. All right. Like, subscribe, Patreon, all of that stuff. All right. Thanks guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys again. Bye.